Michael Zagaris, better known as the Z-Man, has been shooting rock and roll for over five decades, notably for the Rolling Stone magazine, and he knows the beat inside out. In fact, they call him the inside out shooter. So hang on tight. Here we go with the Z-Man. What you're doing, whether you're a still photographer or whether you're a cinematographer or videographer, you want to see when you're done what you want to see when you start out. What is your vision? If you're doing people, that's certainly important, but you also might want to frame it in the context of where you're at. That'll tell a story too. The backdrop, the angle, the lens. The lens really adds a lot to your composition, whether you're using a standard, you know, a 50 millimeter lens, or if you're using a wide angle lens to incorporate more of you know, the background or the room, that's all important. That being said, I usually have in my mind what I want. And if I were shooting in here today and I had never been in here and it was one of those things where, okay, you're going to have a half an hour or 45 minutes with somebody. As I walk in, I kind of take the room in and if you know who you're going to be shooting, you can in your own mind pretty much sort it out pretty fast, okay, what, what you think is going to work. And it's, it's very subjective. You know, in the end, what we do, it's basically our vision. And, it, and it's not unlike a visual diary. And when you're done, you're basically, you're doing it for you, and then you're sharing it with other people. I've always considered myself more in the vein of photojournalism. You know, I like to capture, if not reality, things that appear to be real. I've always considered what I do and my approach to it more like being an actor where you put on the clothes and it's very Stanislavski. You become what you shoot. And that's how I've always tried. That's why I, I actually got into it. It's allowed me to live out various movies uh, as a character in the movie while documenting it at the same time. And it's always given me cachet and entree to situations where you'd never get into unless you were doing this. I notice you're known as the inside out shooter. Yeah, and, and you know, I've always wanted, I mean, not only to experience what I'm shooting myself, but bring people that are viewing my work behind the scenes, whether it be in music, whether it be in politics, whether it be street scenes, whether it be sports, and give them the, the vision of the very people that I'm shooting. And I wanted to bring people behind the scenes and show them things that they've never seen. You know, it's, it's funny, I, I could sit here and tell you how I do it, except I don't know. I've, I've always just kind of flowed with it, and it's just like dancing or anything else. You're there, you're talking, or you're not talking, and you're moving, and you're capturing it. And, and it's never been with me much of a thought process. And, and that's actually been maddening to some people. Yeah. They'll say, how did, you, how did you plan this? Or, what was your F-stop? I, I don't know. I, you know. I mean, I know, but I, I, that's never been important. It's, not the point. it's all about the flow right. with me. And, and I've tried to, you know, whatever I do, first, hopefully, really connect with your subject or your environment and who you're shooting with. Sometimes it's easy. Being a person that you really pay attention, I mean, viscerally in, in your soul and, and try to read where you are and and who you are and how you fit in in relation to your subjects sometimes it means almost being invisible uh -huh. other times it means really relating to an individual or groups of individuals can you kind of walk us through a step by step for how you prepare for a shoot and how you actually get out there and start getting those images you know it depends on what kind of, if i'm going to do um, a cover where we're going to go in a studio and do something, I might start a couple of weeks ahead of time by thinking, okay, I'm going to do so-and-so for this magazine cover. 
what do I want to do? How do, how do I see them? And I've got stacks of magazines that go back to the late 60s, early 70s. And they're not just photo magazines. I mean, most of the things I draw on are things like um, Italian Vogue, English Vogue, French Vogue, um, a lot of European magazines and books. And I'll go through, I might take a couple days just going through and getting ideas. Like, oh, wow, this is great. But I'll do that. And then I'll try to, if, if I'm going to shoot you, for instance, you and I talk about it. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say, we could do this, 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 this. And, and how do you feel about it? What do you, and and, you, and, and I, then I usually tell them, hey, you know what? This isn't about me taking just your picture. I want more than that. Let's, let's do something that in 40 or 50 years, you can look back on and go, this is incredible. This is dynamite. I want you to act or to be either who you are or who you think you are or who you'd like to be. But you have to, you have to put it out there. And I don't care if there's 80 people here. Screw them. There's just you and me. And, and that's hard, but you, let, let's, let's try to do that. Most of the things I shoot, I shoot because I want to explore more, I want to be there, I want to become that, that moment or be with these people. Um, if, for instance, shooting baseball, it's no, for me, it's no different than a player. From the moment I walk through the doors of the clubhouse, in my mind, I'm a player, I'm a major league ball player and I'm, I'm preparing for the game. People know, it's like you're part of the team and they not only don't give you any shit, they, they, they don't mug for the cameras and you've become, if not invisible, part of their teammates and that allows you to capture them as they really are. More of like a reality TV without the non-reality right. and, and it allows me to approach it as if I'm getting ready for the game. So give me an example of that kind of experience, that connection in the rock world. With the Rolling Stones, I remember in 72, after, uh, before they'd go on stage, they had a makeup artist. And depending on who it was, you know, Mick had, you know, a lot more, you know, like rouge here, and then there's eyeshadow and Egyptian coal. Then I'd sit down and I'd get some on there. Because I wanted, I wanted to I figure if you're going to capture the experience, I want to be what I'm shooting. Now, there are some people that'll tell you that's bullshit. You've got to be objective. And you know what? I'm not going to say they're wrong. That's how they approach it. And, if, and, and that's their vision of it. Go for it. Gotcha. But for me, I've got, to, I've got to really be involved. Any final advice for viewers who want to get better shots? Just remain engaged and always be open um try to see and feel everything and just capture it i think the most important thing is to shoot what really moves you and, and shoot what you feel you know whether you're doing it just for pleasure as an amateur or whether you're doing it for a job something that really resonates in you and moves you because chances are if it moves you it's going to move some other people too. Thanks for joining us again. I hope you enjoyed hearing from the Z-Man about shooting rock or anything and we'll put it to use for yourself. Be sure to subscribe now so you don't miss any of our new videos. Also, please share, like, and leave your comments. We love hearing from you. And thanks for joining us. And until we see you again on our next show, remember to get out and capture your own images of life.